Mad Love with Pat's Two Cents. Here to share God's word, followed by Pat's Two Cents, and then some more word and some more Pat's Two Cents. <clears throat> Excuse me. Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Now, let me share this with you. God is a miracle working God. And sometimes you can't see a way out. Sometimes you can't see a way in. Sometimes you just can't see a way. But God is the way, the truth, and the light. That's who Jesus is in our lives. Listen, God always makes a way. Sometimes God's silence is the answer. Because some things can only happen in silence. Sometimes God's darkness is the answer because some things are only created in the darkness. That's where light was formed from. You hear what I'm saying? God said, let there be light. Why, when did that happen? When darkness was upon the face of the deep. That's when God said, let there be light. Some things God creates whatever he creates must be created in the dark don't ask me why i am not the one that's who you go to for those kind of deep answers but god is a miracle working god he is also extremely wise he is the epitome of wisdom so when you want to have an answer manifest itself and you can't fabricate it, you can't hunt it down, you can't figure it out, you can't conjure it up, you can't call it in, you can't do anything because you cannot make a way, you can't find a way, you can't see a way, you can't even borrow a way. Well, guess what? God will make a way where there is no way because he is a God of creation. He is a miracle working God. I remember one of my friends, Pat's two cents, but one of my friends was, was saying uh, that she was on her knees praying about a very hopeless situation. Very hopeless. And God spoke to her audibly. He quoted his own word. It was really funny. But it lifted her spirit when he said to her, I am a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God. You take that to the bank. Just know that some answers cannot be seen right away. God also works within the realm of purpose and within the realm of timing. Now, as much as some of you may be dealing with your personal situations, some of you may be seeing the signs of the times and you don't like the results and whatever. But listen to this, you guys. Listen. Don't focus on the wrong thing. Okay. Remember, God used Herod to bring about the crucifixion of Christ. Now, Herod could have just, just blown it away and said, no, this ain't going to happen on my watch. He washed his hands. And left Jesus at the mercy of the people. But listen. That was part of God's plan. Because when it looks like. All hell is breaking loose. When it looks like. Everything has just been flushed down the toilet. When it looks like everybody's coming against you. Or there is no help for you anymore. You can't find help of you. If you paid for it. God positions that 
because he will set the stage to teach us who is really in control. He will set the stage to teach us who our real Savior is. Do you hear what I'm saying? God creates things out of nothing just by his word. All he has to do is speak the word. So when you know there is no, when it says here, the earth was without form, that means I could take a comb. This comb has form. It, it, there's mass. It's tangible. You know what you're looking at when you look at a comb. However, darkness, no form, emptiness, void, nothingness. God is still working in that. Even though you can't see it, I can't see it, you can't feel it, you can't sense it, you don't get it, you don't understand what's, what the heck is going on. God is weaving something. He's weaving a manifestation of a solution that we've been waiting for. That's why the Bible says so many times, fear not, be of good courage. He talks about how um, he talks about how he will make a way in the wilderness and, and a way in the in the desert and he will bring springs and he will overflow. I mean, he just he will make ways for us that we can't even fathom. How did he do that? When I was going through, I remember when the nation was in the financial crisis. And everybody was going through the foreclosure thing, including moi. Well, <clears throat> the, ho the house that we had was all we had. My husband was blind on dialysis in a wheelchair. I was the only one out there working. And I was trying to keep a salon afloat so I could have somewhere to keep making my living. Now, the sad part was my house had been in foreclosure for two years. Now, the miracle in it is the two and a half. It was literally two and a half years that we did not make one mortgage payment. That was the miracle. But for me, it was dark without form and void for me, right? I was in panic mode from day one. I was like, what? What is going on? I was crying to the Lord, begging the Lord. I knew where to go. I was praying to the Lord. I wasn't trying to take matters into my own hands. And when I'd ask him for help, he would set the stage. And I could see, oh, this is God. I mean, basic things like I was at the hospital with my husband in the, in the emergency room. While they were checking him out, and I was waiting for them to give me permission to go in. I get a phone call. Now in my car, right? In my car is sitting a stack of papers that I had to get in that night by 5 p.m. Or foreclosure would take the next step. I could not get my documents faxed in because I had to be there at the hospital with my husband. So, I'm gonna have to get him there. So I asked God, Lord, make a way for me to get these papers in because I don't want them snatching the house out because we can't be everywhere and do everything they want us to do right when they want us to do it. All of a sudden, I get a phone call. It's a lady who God had already ordained to help us save our home or delay the axe from falling. And she says, where are you? I said, oh, I'm at Huntington Hospital. Are you serious? I said, yeah. She said, well, what's going on? And I told her. 
And I told her my dilemma. I tried to get the hospital to let me use their fax machine. She said, girl, God is good. Do you know where I am? I am two blocks from you. Meet me outside of the emergency room and I will take your paperwork and I'll fax it at my house. She got it in before 5 p.m. That delayed the foreclosure another two or three months. Every step of the way, God would shed light on our pathway. Every step of the way, when we thought, oh no, there's nothing else we can do, she would make a call, she'd write a letter, or nothing would happen. They wouldn't take action, and it would buy us more time. God was definitely in that whole situation. Do you know why? You know what he was doing? He was working in the dark where there was where there was no form and everything was void and there was nothingness, no answers anywhere in sight. God was working a miracle on our behalf, working a miracle. He was bringing the economy down, 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 down. God knows how to level out the playing field, y'all. You hear me? He brings those that are low up and brings those that are high down. We were low, baby. And what God did was tell me, he told me to turn on my computer. He had something for me. That's how I found this house. The house had dropped by $10,000. After it dropped by $10,000, we offered $6,000 less than that. This house was bank owned. Right now, you guys, I live off of $856 a month. Widow's benefits. Widow's benefits. $856. You can barely live in a room, run a room, and be able to have enough to make it with that. You hear me? All my bills go to the light bill and the gas and the utilities. Insurance, all of that. But guess what? God blessed me with food stamps and Medi-Cal. So I have free medical coverage, free food. I'm living like a queen off of a garage rental income. And I own my own home. I've never been late on the mortgage payments. That includes the HOA. I am telling you, God knows where to place you. You have to have an open mind. Don't see things the way they are and put a pause button on that. Because while you're on pause, freaking out on the image right in front of you, God is in high action. I mean, he's in, he's working. Uh, he is working. What happened to us? He timed it. My friend put this lady, she put our house in a short sale. It picked up within a month. Well, now we really had to get a place. And that's how we got the place. We went into escrow. The man went into escrow. He came out of escrow two weeks before we came out of escrow. And he gave us a whole month. And we moved out. No kinks, no errors, no problems. God worked everything out according to timing. And because it was in short sale, the money we did not have to move was given to us to move to to this house. The moving expenses were covered by the $3,000 that was allotted to us because of the short sale. I am telling you, God knows what he's doing. So if you feel like all of this that's going on, whether it's in your personal life or if it's in the nation's life, whatever the case may be, God is in control, you guys. God will make a way where there is no way. He'll make a way in the wilderness. His hands are not so short. He is not a, a wimp. 
He is not a mamby-pamby dingbat that doesn't know what he's doing, that's on a coffee break, scratching his head and picking his nose, trying to figure out, what do I do? What do I do? Where do I go? How do I do it? He's not tripping. You serve a prayer hearing, and you serve a prayer answering God. And don't you ever, ever forget that. He loves you with an everlasting love.